How's everything been two weeks in the camp trying to blend everything together on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, you know, just getting acclimated to the guys. You know, we were together in the spring, but you really don't know. The spring, you're putting in the defense and you're kind of figuring them out. But now you get a chance to see them compete against uh, our offense. And, you know, to me, I think it's, it's only going to make you better. You know, that's the thing that we talked about uh, as a secondary is competition. And, you know, we always, I believe that. And I think our guys are falling into it now. They're believing, hey, look, just go out there and compete. You know, it doesn't matter who you're going against. You got to get yourself better, ready to go every, every day. Well, number one, they're younger, you know, a lot younger than a group that I've ever been in with. But, you know, now we're blending in Jesse, who we who came in from Cincinnati. We got uh, Jeff. We got uh, Mike Hughes, who came in from Detroit. You got, you know, another guy. So we're kind of like a blended group. And now we're trying to make it, okay, let's see how we're going to be the Atlanta Falcons. And and big thing is that, you know, guys are going to compete. Hey, put guys in here. Let me see if if uh, Trey can go out here with the first group. Let me see if Mike Houston go with the first group. So now we're kind of like figuring out, okay, who, how many seven to eight guys do we have that can actually go out there and play and just, just get ready. It doesn't matter who who's out there. Let's see how you can compete. How will going up against the Dolphins receiver specifically help you? Well, you know, number one, we'll see a different group of guys. You know, you, you see a lot more speed that these guys have. They're really, really fast. You know, so we'll, we'll get a chance to see what we're teaching in Atlanta and how that affects us up here. And the biggest thing I talk to our guys about, just go back to technique. You know, don't worry about who you going against. What is my technique? Yeah, we know it's different speed. We know it's different different guys. So it's going to be ramped up a little bit. It always is. But the biggest thing is if you if you're looking for – an individual fight, you're going to screw up the defense. So go back to technique, go back to what we're doing in Atlanta. It's not so much about Miami. It's about what we're trying to put together in, in uh, Atlanta. You've seen a lot of fast dudes. Where do these two guys rank in terms of a duo? Really fast. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably be anchor and third leg on, on, a, on a sprint relay team. So so they're, they're really fast. You know, and, and again, we I, I got a chance to play them last year when I was in Green Bay. And, you know, you get a chance to see – how really fast they are. And then I was fortunate enough to play against uh, uh, Cheetah in uh, Kansas City. So you know the guys can run. The biggest thing is that you, you might need help over the top. Sometimes you don't need help over the top. But the biggest thing you got to do is get to the quarterback. And, and it's about practice. You know, we're going out one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to do 7-on-7. Seven -on -seven. We're going to do just what we did in Atlanta. And we respect those guys. We're just trying to get how can we relate to their offense compared to playing against the offense for two weeks. Did you take Hart into, ten into Tennessee as the QC when you were the DC there? Oh uh, yeah. I, well, why did you you had been with him at Washington? Mm -hmm. So why did you want him back? Well, number one, I knew he was he was good at what he did when we were together in in Washington. So that was my first time getting a chance to kind of see. He was he was basically in that same type of role when we were in Washington. I was a DB coach over there, and we were serving Joe Gibbs. You know, that's kind of how he was, and his mindset was I I know. He's more like Joe Gibbs than anybody else that I've been with. You know, he want to run the football. He want to play great defense and you win championships. So when, when I went to Tennessee, I knew I needed another guy that was a quality control that was smart that understood defense. Even though I knew he was an offensive guy, we got him over there. He did, he did a great job. And then Munchak kind of stole him and put him on offense because he knew how good he was going to be. And, and that, that kind of helped us out because now when he looks at us, he knows from the defense standpoint what we're trying to do. You know, it's not just I'm a head coach of offense and you guys do your own stuff. He knows what we're doing over there. He understands what we're trying to do, make sure it's sound so we can win football games. Talking to, talking to some of, of like um, your guys, like they say Jerry Gray is the same guy every single day, rain or shine, like no matter what. Why is that important as you're trying to get this group coming uh, together? Well, you know, it, it was instilled to me when I was a player. You know, when I was a player, uh, at Texas, I had a defensive, have defensive back coach, really, really good. He was the same way. You know, Alan Lowry did a great job, made, made all American. He didn't care. You come right back to doing technique football. The very next year, you go right back to starting from A, go back to Z. And then got fortunate enough to get with the Rams and had another defensive back coach exactly like Alan Lowry. It doesn't matter if you all pro. The first day you're going back to back pedal breaking and driving. And and I'm like, okay, why is that? Because you lose so much during the season, 
you have to go back and build back up. So I'm get, trying to get the young guys to understand. It doesn't matter what the weather is. What's your standard? And your standard is going to always show up. If you're worrying about hot, cold, rain, snow, you're going to be in trouble because I've been in all those climates. And if you get that same guy that's constant on what he's going to do, it doesn't matter. His standard is going to always grow and he's going to get better. And that's what we got to do here in Atlanta. Well, to me, I think it was tough. I, I talked to him right after, been texting him every day. The biggest thing is that I'm getting him prepared. Hey, what are you doing that's going to get your mind in the game? And so I always send them stuff. Okay, I need you to look at Indianapolis. Well, wh Coach, why am I looking at Indy? Well, Carolina is now <laughs> old Indy. And if you don't get your mind right, you're going to miss that. So I want you to, as you're rehabbing, do what you're supposed to do. But now you got to prepare yourself as if I'm getting ready to go in this game here. I'm getting ready to go against Cincinnati. I'm getting ready to go against that. So, it, you know, I kind of know basically what his mind is because I, I was injured playing in the pros. Now, what do you do? You don't go brain dead. You still have to be prepared. So once he's prepared and he's ready to go, guess what? He won't miss a beat. And, and that's what guys tend to do. They, they tend to wait for them to get back to practice. And then you ain't studied, you haven't done any game planning, and you're trying to do two things. You're trying to overcome an injury and you're trying to study someone else you're going to be behind. When it comes to guys who are, you know, have a chance to come in after Jeff Okuda, guys like Drew Flowers and Mike Hughes that you were talking about earlier, what have you kind of seen from them in the last couple of practices and what do you kind of need to see from them as you move forward in the next couple of weeks? Well, the biggest thing is that, you know, how do you mesh with the group, number one? Uh, we're trying to figure out, okay, you're a press guy, you're off guy, because you're going to let us know what you like doing. So we go in there and we look at that. So as we watch film, now we know who, who Jeff is. Let's see who Mike is. Let's see who Trey is. Let's see who D. Alfred is. You know, let's see who these guys are when you're out there with the first group. And, and guess what? They're going to be different out here today because now they're going to be going up and like, oh, man, I got to go up against 10. I got to go up against 17. Okay, they fast guys, but who are you? Don't worry about them, guys. Who are you going to be consistent? You know, just like we talked about, what type of consistency are we looking for? And that's day in and day out. It doesn't really matter about the opponent. It's a, it really matters about you because if we put in two weeks of work and you change the technique, you're back to zero. And I'm not looking for that guy. I'm looking to get him back to his technique that he was doing in Atlanta. It seems like Arthur, probably because of his family background, structures things like a businessman in his head. Does, do you notice that as a coach? Do you notice that that's kind of how he structures his thoughts? Well, to me, I think, you know, just, just knowing Arthur and being around him, it, it, he knows that nothing's going to be constant. It's going to be a change. Like, okay, give you an example. Last night, we're getting ready to get on the plane. We're going to leave at 2. Well, I mean, be at the airport at 2. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Well, they push it back. So now it's like, okay, make an adjustment. Don't panic over the adjustment. There's some things you can't control. So get ready to go. So I think he's getting our team like that. There's going to be some things going to happen in the game that we can't control. It may be a drop punt, maybe this, maybe that. Well, what are you going to do about it? Go out there on the football field and get ready for the next play. And that's the, that's the mindset he's getting us in as coaches, as players. So now we go out there to play. It doesn't matter about the circumstances that we can't control. What, what can you do? and make an adjustment and keep going to the next play. You said he's more like Joe Gibbs than anybody you'd ever coached with at that point. Why? What, beyond just the commitment to the run game and the belief in the run game? Well, you know, one of the things uh, people wouldn't know about Coach Gibbs, he loves jokes. You know, yeah. he oh, we'd be in stretch line and he'll get a guy to talk, say a joke. And I mean, everybody's having fun because he wanted loose, but he knew once we got in practice, he, practice is going to take care of itself. You know, you, you wouldn't know that, hey, I'm a Hall of Fame head coach, but I like jokes. But then when it's time to business, he won't be in business now. So Arthur has a little bit of that. He likes a little bit of joking on the side. But when it's time to go business, we're going we're gonna to do business. You can't be business 90 minutes in a row. That, yeah. That's not that you're going to wear yourself out. So you have to have some type of personality that's going to get you through the 90 minutes. And it can't be serious all 90 minutes. You know, you got to have something that's going to loosen the guys up, tell them a joke, this. And again, he'll get players to do it. I mean, that's what Joe Gibbs did. So Arthur's doing it. He's feeling this way. And, and you can see this is my first year with him as a head coach, but I've seen what he's built over the last two years. You know, he's built some consistent guys. They've been in a lot of tough football games. Now let's learn how to win those close games, you know. And, and all good teams have to learn that. You have to learn how to win close games other than lose close games. You brought up D. Alfred a minute ago. This is a kid who two, three years ago was working out at FedEx, and, and now he's kind of emerging as, you know, an important piece of you know, his secondary. How do you see kind of his work ethic week in and week out, maybe day in? 
<laughs> well, you know, the big thing I see from him is that he loves to compete. You know, and this is his first time we putting him in at nickel. So we play some nickel. You know, I'm looking at his background. I go back and Google. He grew up in a small town in Georgia. All of a sudden, he goes to a small D2 school. He goes to Canada. So I'm like, okay, well, who is he? He played corner. He was really good at that. You know, led a lot of deals. They won a great cup. Now he's over here. And I'm trying to get him to understand you belong here. You're not lucky. You belong here. Okay, how do you compete at this level? Well, the way you compete is the same way you compete in high school, same way you compete in college. It's just that I'm going against other guys. They're, they're a little bit better. And you know what? You raise your game up to a little bit better. And then when this becomes who you are, you're back, you'll go back to being natural of making plays. And a lot of times guys tend to forget that. They think I got to do something dramatic in order to be a good football player. You really don't. All you have to do is raise up your level of practice and then once you practice this way, you become that way. And that's what really what we're getting with D. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what I told that's the thing I've talked to Darren about is that, you know, you, you may not have been a press guy on, on what we did uh, last year. Now this year the the defense has changed. So how do you adjust? You know, how do you make this fit you and this is I mean every defense is like that so now Miami is going to go from being a zero pressure to being a cover four shell defense all right how do you fit in so now you have to tailor your game okay coach you want me to press I need to work on pressing the spring I need to work on this and then well if I'm not fast guess what I've seen a lot of guys who are not fast you know what they do they play outside leverage it take away some things that they can't do so you figure it out as football players and then my job is to make sure I help you figure it out if you can't before it's too late and, and that's really what I, I'm here for I'm here to teach these guys how to play at a level to where we can win week in and week out and it's not just a scoreboard it's just that when I look at film I want to know you're being consistent sometimes we're going to lose some games do I want to of course not but you learn from that and then you go on, but don't change your, your whole style doing that in a loss.